So in this video, I want to go through the three main ways that we do the mathsy bit for a sample means hypothesis test. So you will have known from, if you've done binomial hypothesis testing uh, first, uh, that there are two main ways of doing it. You either look at a p-value method, where you compare the p-value against the significance level, or you use a critical region method, uh, where you have your value, you compare it with the critical region. Is it in the critical region? Yes, so we reject. And if it's not in the critical region, you fail to reject. Okay, so sample means hypothesis testing has those two methods as well, but it also has a third, which is using a test statistic, which is essentially a critical region method um, that just brings it back to using the standard normal distribution, which you may well see in mark schemes, um, in exam paper mark schemes, but also you might see it as part of, um, uh, sometimes exam papers do those questions where it's like a student's attempt. It's like, uh, Harry has attempted to do a sample means hypothesis test. Here he's, he's working out, and your job is to identify where the errors are and correct it, that type of question. So you could get it like that as well. Um, so really, having an understanding of all three methods is really a, a good shout. But at the end of the day, if the question just says, perform a sample means hypothesis test, then if I was doing the exam paper, I would use a p-value method every time. Okay, so let's consider the p-value method first. Now, I'm not going to be going through a whole exam question here, but um, what we're doing is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go kind of give you a rough idea of how this works first. And then when I start going through examples, um, I will do all three methods so you can see um, how uh, those modifications happen. Okay. So the p-value method, how does that work? Well, the idea is that here is your normal distribution, okay, and not a particularly good one, but that'll do. Uh, here is your normal distribution, and within the question, you are told a significance level. So let's say the significance level is 5%. So this is your significance level. And what that means is that there is a 5% tail in your normal distribution. Now, you know, for argument, it could be down here, it could be up here, it could be a two-tail test, but let's just imagine it's up here, okay, for the moment. So if your significance level is 5%, then what you're going to do is you're going to have a sample mean, and you're going to work out how unlikely that sample mean is. Now, your sample mean... Uh, might be this value here. So let's say this is your x bar that you have calculated or is within the question. And you work out its probability. You go, well, its probability is this. And you go, well, actually, that's less than the significance level. OK, so the very nature of the fact that the x bar, so the probability of x being greater than x bar, because that probability here is less than 5%, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So we're going to reject H0. Okay? Because it's within this region, right? It's less than the significance level. If, on the other hand, x bar had been here, okay? And remember, this is the 5%, so that region there. This is 5%. If the probability of x bar uh, being greater than x bar is greater than 5%, then we fail to reject H0. OK? So that is the same as it was in binomial hypothesis testing. 
If your p-value is less than the significance level, you reject. And if it's greater than, you fail to reject. Because what we're saying is that if it is less than 5%, then it's unlikely enough for us to suggest that the null hypothesis is wrong. Okay, so that is using the p-value method. Then we've got the critical region method. Now the critical region, same really, same idea really. Here is your normal distribution. Now I'm going to identify this as mu is mu, okay? Well, the critical region is somewhere, isn't it, right? So here is your critical value, and that is your critical region. If your x bar is here, okay, to the left of the critical value, then it's not in the critical region. So x bar is not in the critical region. So we fail to reject h0. OK, x bar is less than the critical value. If instead x bar was here, then x bar is in the critical region. So we reject h0. OK, so when it comes down to this, I mean, some people get confused because in one case uh, here, I'm saying if x bar is greater than the critical value, then we reject. And here, if my x bar had been here, then the probability of x being greater than x bar is less than the significance level, so we reject. So there's this confusion between, oh, if it's less than, do I reject, or if it's greater than, do I reject? And there's this confusion between the p-value method and the critical value. But diagram-wise, it's the same thing, right? X bar is to the right of where that line here is, and that line is precisely dee, 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 that critical value. Okay, so x that bit here is the critical value. It's just that the area for the critical value and beyond is going to be greater than if it's x bar and beyond. Okay, so one's looking at a value further along, and one is looking at the area. So essentially, it's just a different way of writing out your answer. So then, the third and final method that we're going to consider is using a test statistic. Now, this is utilizing our old friend, our coding, z is equal to x take away mu over sigma. Okay, but uh, we need to do a couple of adjustments here. Because now we're looking at a sample mean, so our x bar, and here we're looking at the standard error. Okay, now this is the form that we use. Now, when we plug this information in, so your x bar is the sample mean that's in the question, so your you're either going to calculate that, it kind of gives you 10 values and you work out what the sample mean is, or it tells you in the question what it is. You know what the population mean is, it gives it to you in the question it's got to. The standard deviation is in the question as well, and you know what the sample size is. So you put that into the formula, and this should be in your formula booklet as well. 
Okay, or at least it is in uh, AQA, but double check your um, formula booklet. So you put this into your formula booklet, <laughs> put the values into the formula rather, and what that calculates is your test statistic, your value of Z. Okay, and what you then do is you're looking at this normal distribution, you're looking at the standard normal. Okay, which has the uh, mean of zero and variance of one. Okay, and you find the corresponding critical value, right, that comes from five percent. So you would do um, inverse normal of five percent. Uh, well, at the top end, so if you're using a class whiz, if we look at the top end, we've got to use uh, inver inverse normal and put the error in as 0.95, because remember, always go to the left, so you want 5% at the top. But if you're using a, a CG50 or a NumWorks or something like that, then you could just look at 5% at the top. So you get your critical value, like that. Then you determine your Z value is it to the right of the critical value, in which case it's in the critical region, so you reject? Or is it to the left of the critical value, in which case it's not in the critical region, so you fail to reject? Okay, so it's a slightly different way of doing it, but order of preference for me would definitely be this one at the top and then this one at the bottom, because this requires the most work. Um, but it is one that you often see played out in mark schemes. Okay, so as we go through examples, I'll show you how these methods differ and the amount of working that goes with them. Um, and then really you can kind of see for yourself uh, which ones or one you prefer.